Hey everyone, Atsukayak here, and you want to know what makes good review material? Christian movies. I don't know what it is about the Bible that inspires really god-awful films, but whether you're looking at God's Not Dead or Joshua in the Promised Land, it's guaranteed that you'll find something to complain about. However, since literally everybody has covered those movies at this point, I wanted to look at something that nobody's ever heard of. So after doing a cursory search through YouTube, I stumbled upon this little gem, The Legend of the Three Trees. I have never heard of this movie before, so hopefully there is some prime entertainment that I can get from it. Let's get the film rolling. Tommy Nelson and Main Street Entertainment, in association with TLC Entertainment, present the Legend of the Three Trees. This might just be me, but does anyone feel like they're about to watch a sex ed film? Because this feels like the opening to a sex ed film. John C. Smith Productions presents Chlamydia and How to Avoid Getting It. It's a good thing that this animation is running at 2 frames per second. It really helps me connect with the struggle of these water droplets. Our story started a long time ago. In a galaxy far, far away. Oh, come on. You knew I was going to make that joke. What else was I supposed to say there? When the world was just beginning, God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb that yields seed. Aha! I knew God created marijuana, and everybody said I was fucking crazy! And the fruit tree that yields fruit. Oh my fucking god, the fruit tree yielded fruit? All this time I thought it produced vegetables or something. The narrator continues to go on about the many different trees God created until our focus shifts to a giant olive tree. The wind knocks some of its olives onto the ground, and one of them is eventually buried into it where it'll grow into its own tree. You know, I'm starting to regret watching this. The story of our second tree starts with a squirrel who was collecting acorns for the winter. Actually, it starts with the acorn that got away. Damn it, narrator, you can't keep throwing me for a loop like that. My blood pressure is already high enough as it is. <laughs> As the acorn bobbed up and down in the stream, it had no idea of the amazing journey it would take to become a tree. From tree to stream to lake, the seed inside the acorn made its way past one challenge after another. We couldn't show you any of that though because we're running on a really tight budget. Tally-ho! Until it was planted in the toughest spot imaginable, along the rocky coast. Why do all of the animals in this film look so menacing? It's really odd to see such frightening faces in a light-hearted movie. Okay, I'm not an expert in plant life, but I'm pretty sure it's next to impossible for a seed to grow in that environment. This is a Christian movie though, so I guess we can throw logic and reason out the window. Buzzing! Our third tree took root on a high ledge overlooking a mountain pass, high above the valley, stream, and lake below. That was fucking quick. Does the film not think that the third tree is as important as the others? After a few shots of cliffside scenery, we cut to a song about how the wind contributes to the planting of seeds. I am not fucking joking. Wind arises from the east And it blows across the 
My god, the one time I try to find something original to mock, and I get stuck watching a fucking musical about the life cycle of plants. What I find scary is that there are parents out there who have shown this to their children as a means of entertainment. I feel really bad for anybody who had to grow up watching this garbage. The narrator continues telling us about the trees that spawn from the seeds, and the fact that we're only 7 minutes through this movie makes me want to bash my head in with a hammer. The tree grew beautiful and strong, and was appreciated by the animals for her shade and food. But she had a bigger dream. She dreamed of becoming an editor at BuzzFeed. This joke has been brought to you by the Dead Horse Catalog. If you wish to order your own unoriginal wisecracks, please call us at 222-2221. That's 222-2221. Dead Horse Catalog. As long as somebody laughed, then it was worth it. The olive tree longed to become a treasure chest. Her wood carved, polished, and shiny, covered with gold and jewels. The most magnificent treasure chest in the world. A chest fit for a king. So, this tree dreamed of being killed and having its skin used to make a box? Jesus Christ, that's morbid. Although I'd be lying if I said that this was the weirdest thing that Christian movies have presented me with, which honestly says more about this genre of film than it does about me. One day the olive tree felt that her dream was about to come true. Hey, isn't that the I Am Air guy from Zelda 2? Holy shit it is! Huh. You must have a really crappy agent if he gets casted in shit movies like this. Her big moment had finally arrived. At last, she was sure that she was on her way to becoming a great treasure chest. The woodcutter placed the olive tree on his cart and took her to his shop. Even though the carpenter had made some beautiful things, that was not how he decided to use our olive tree. From her, he made a simple feed trough for farm animals. Well, that sucks. Let's find out what happened to the other trees. The strong, gnarled oak tree hung tightly to the rocky coast. What a courageous tree he had become. His trunk standing firm against the harshest winds. The oak was legendary. Standing strongly on- Oh my god, that looked awful. The Nintendo CDI games had more fluid animation than this. You know what they say, all toast is toast toast. The oak was legendary. Standing strongly on the coast as a proud example to trees everywhere. That an oak could survive in the most difficult conditions. Oh yeah, because there are certainly other trees around, I can see what this one has accomplished, what with it growing in the fucking rocks. The narrator goes on to tell us that the second tree wished to be a king's sailboat. Some boat makers come by and kill it, which sends these Chippendale knockoffs to their deaths. They will be missed. Unfortunately, the tree doesn't become a king's boat, but is instead fashioned into a regular old fishing boat. As for the final tree... ...dreamed of being the tallest tree in the entire forest. When people looked up at the pine tree with its giant branches reaching tall toward heaven, the tree hoped to remind people of God's glory, majesty, and power. Huh, who knew pine trees were such religious fanatics? The ferocious storm took the third tree by surprise. Rain pelted the earth for days. The animals searched for cover. The thunderstorm attacked the tall pine with a vengeance. <laughs> okay, I can just imagine that this rainstorm isn't a natural occurrence, but it's just a result of Zeus having an intense hatred for this tree. Bra! Large Christian tree makes Zeus angry! Yeah. So the third tree gets struck down by lightning and cast aside by the humans, where it lies in wait for many, many years. What is a dream 
that won't come true What was the point of even dreaming it When you find your plans have fallen through Oh hell no, we are not dealing with another song. I'm skipping past this shit. Then one star-filled night, an amazing thing happened. An angel appeared to a group of frightened shepherds and said, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a savior. Huh, so this all leads back to the birth of Christ? Honestly, I should have seen that coming. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. A manger, another name for a feed trough. One that held the savior of the world. Our first tree, the olive tree who dreamed of holding great treasure. Well, God let her hold the greatest treasure of all. The second tree holds its own as a fishing boat as a vicious storm rages on around it. Zeus must really hate sentient trees since this is like the second time in five minutes that he's tried to kill one. That's kind of weird considering that he turned his daughter into a tree, but whatever, you do you, Zeus. The narrator reveals that the second tree helped carry Jesus across the sea, and as for the third tree, it becomes the cross that Jesus is nailed to. The pine tree who dreamed of standing tall and pointing people to God had a role that no other tree would ever have. The mob yelled, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Whoa, alright narrator, calm down, you're starting to scare me with how excited you're getting here. The movie ends with the message that God's plans for you are greater than your own, and that to live a fulfilling life, you have to trust and believe in Him. It's an oft-repeated Christian mantra that lost any sort of validity to me years ago. Oh my god, was this a boring movie to watch. I have never felt so underwhelmed by something since I played Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. And that doesn't even adequately describe how painful of an experience watching this was. If there's anything I appreciate over the past year I've spent reviewing media, it's terrible movies. At least shitty films give you something to be angry about and are great sources for jokes and satire. Crap like this, on the other hand, is a literal torture to sit through because of how unchallenging it is. The legend of the three trees sucking fucks. And that's all I can really say about it. I'm Alex the Critic, and I don't know if you've noticed, but October has rolled around, which means that it's about time that I get started on my Halloween reviews. See you ghouls later! Shut up, I thought it was funny.